Please be seated. Good morning, everybody. My name is Arlie and wanted to be serving as your county board of supervisor of the name here, no Peters, along with Sunnydale, and also with the country. Uh, I'm very honored today to be invited to uh, conduct the oath of uh, bringing our assemblyman, I three. Uh, today's ceremony is a little bit different. You'll hear from our current language. Uh, it's a little bit modified, but we show the values of what our uh, assembly really is uh, uh, working towards. Uh, I feel to uh, state that uh, originally there was a plan of having Congress to work on to be doing this very As many of us have watched on TV, we're beta breath down with the 15th row, finally, we have a new speaker. And so he was out there until at least 2 a.m. in the morning. So uh, it's uh, unfortunate that you won't be able to make it uh, today. So I'm doing the uh, pitch in, <laughs> but it's an uh, honor uh, if we're in our seminar. So please come up. Uh, Good 
be that for me. Hi, state your name. Hi, Alex Lee. Do solemnly vow. Do solemnly vow. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Born in the middle. Born in the middle. And to work to my highest ability. And to work to my highest ability. In making progress. In making progress. California's pressing issues. And California's pressing issues. To craft better policy. To craft better policy. To fight for fair budget investment. To fight for fair budget investment. To help those in need. To help those in need. To improve our civic discourse. To improve our civic discourse. And to always put service to the community. And to always put service to the community. First in my duties. First in my duties. As a representative of the people. As a representative of the people. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. One second, but can you give another round of applause to Survivor Auto Lead for second? Shout out to Survivor Lead, who has been an incredible mentor to me. We were both elected at the same time. And Congressman O'Connor, as, as uh, Survivor Lee said, has been up basically all night and is in fact on his way here at Stairwell. He's that dedicated to our community that there's no, so he'll probably be here. Closer to 12 30 noon, if you still want to talk to him, uh, he'll try to make it here. But you know, he really does abide that kind of service. And someone also advised the service, of course, is Supervisor Lee, who last minute I said, Well, have you, has it, have you been patient? What's up, Lisa? Can you uh, tomorrow? Can you do this? <laughs> it's very gracious in doing so. So, you know, I just want to thank all of you for being here. I know it's obviously stormy, COVID time right now, but it's so important to be able to gather. Uh, first, I want to thank my friends for joining me. Uh, especially my high school friends who have really come back here to our high school auditorium or theater to join me. I want to thank my family for uh, putting up with uh, this weird lifestyle that sometimes you don't understand. But I thank you for supporting me this time. And of course, I also want to thank uh, someone who doesn't usually get shout outs or their name recognized. I want to thank my district staff. I want to thank Anurag, my district director. <laughs> In the community celebration, if I did not announce and thank all of the um, collected um, elected officials here today, and I would just ask that you hold your applause at the end. This list is uh, very long. Uh, so <laughs> you can hold your applause at the end. And you can definitely stand up if you want to if I call your name. So, first, I want to recognize Sarah Lannon, the director of the Hayward Area Recreation District. Oh, please hold your applause again. Uh, we also have Diane Shaw, the East Transit Board of Directors. We have Karen Hardy, the Santa Clara City Council member, Paul Seti, Alameda County Water District Board. We have Suds Jane, Santa Clara City Council member. We have Minna, our Mojitas Unified School Board member. We have Nancy Thomas, our Newark Unified School Board member. We have Mayor Michael Hannon of Newark. We have Chris Norwood, Mojitas Unified School Board. We have David Cohen, San Jose City Council member. Uh, we have Vicki Fairchild, Santa Clara Unified School Board member, Kelly Twan, Mopia School Board member, Diane Jones, Fremont Unified School Board member, Anthony Fan, Mopia School Board, Mopia City Council, uh, Peter Romo, who is part of the Sonoma Glen Unified School Board member, Anthony Rocha, Salinas City Council member, thank you, Mr. Ward, for being part of this. Bob Livingood. The San Jose Evergreen Community College District, Alan Chua, the Vice Mayor of Mopitas, Peter Ortiz, the San Jose City Council member. We have Omar Torres, another San Jose City Council member. Derek Ratsey, Mount Pleasant School Board member. And of course, we have Otto Lee, Santa Clara County 
Science Advisor with Anunaka, newly elected Lofia State Advice Board member. Uh, Doris Morales, Policy Research Council, so moving time to policy actually. Yeah. And we have uh, Aziz Akbari, Alameda County Water District. We have Naomi Nakamoto Matsumoto, Nakamoto Matsumoto, Fremont you know, Union, Fremont Union School Board member. And we have Paul Lian, Lofia School Board member. And last but not least, we have our new state senator, Aisha Waha, on the door. Okay, I got everyone. So thank you all for being here. I really think that this is, you know, a indication of the community effort we have. You know, this celebration is, is very special to me because when I was elected in 2020, it was height of COVID. Um, literally in Sacramento, when I was sworn with the entire rest of the state assembly, we were sworn in on the floor of the Boulder One Center where the Sacramento Kings play because we had to have social distancing. It had to be a big auditorium kind of setting, and I wasn't allowed to have friends or family attend for that. Uh, and two years later, after um, my first term, a lot of heartache and a lot of challenges were here at this point. And I always wanted it to have my first community swearing in, which we of course didn't have two years ago, uh, here. Because Mopitas High School is where it started. You know, I tell the story a lot of times that I was the kind of kid that was terrified to read in front of the class, <laughs> just in high school. And now I'm able to be on stage with you talking that casually, just because we've done it so well. Uh, but really, this is the school that taught me how you got. Mopitas, unlike, uh, or maybe like many, many schools, is this is the real melting pot and the microcosm of all the site. Rich or poor, smart or athletic, they're all together in the same place. We all just live in Mopitas. We have the same school. There's no, and I always say this to a lot of young people, is when you go to college or you have a job, there's an artificial filter. Right? You all pass some sort of filter, get there. Mopitas, you just live in Mopitas and you're here, basically. And that's the kind of embodiment of public service we have to think about is these are the residents of our area, of our home area, and we have to be the best by everything. And, um, you know, the pandemic is the world I came into being elected for the first time. When I ran in 2020, uh, I'd never been elected official. In fact, I was much like my staff, in, in a staff in the legislature, and that was my closest role to being in the legislature. In fact, at the time when I ran, most people, uh, including myself, did not think I was going to win. Uh, we were severely outspent, severely uh, out endorsed, but you know what? Actually, trying to the end was adorable. We went to every small event, we talked to every single person we could, and in the crazy times of the 2020 presidential election, we still triumphed and we won. And that was uh, March 2020, so it was two weeks before the first lockdown, and then the whole world changed. And I am just glad to have that skill set, born and bred for this community, to be able to take on those challenges head on. We had to figure out what Zoom school looked like. We had to figure out what rental assistance looked like, things that we never had done in the history of this country, much less on the state. And I'm very glad that I have been appointed to seven committees in my first uh, term, including being on the budget committee, which is rare for freshmen to be on the budget committee. And I had told actually that at the time of the speaker, I said that I'm gladly, this is 2024, so I gladly serve on the um, the budget committee because during the during the pandemic we all thought there was a recession, everything's gonna fall apart. And I said if there is anyone to have to serve on and make smart choices, I want to be there because I want to defend our schools and social safety net from austerity. Turns out though, the mega rich get, get mega rich and we did not get into a recession. And I was proud to be part of the budget committee to deliver 32 million dollars directly back to this district, back to our home district. 32 million dollars. And, you know, that money can go to things like in uh, Berryessa, we're going to have a new gym, in Petis, we're going to have uh, services for the house, lots of different things. And in Fremont, we're going to build a lot of new buildings and renovate things, which is super cool. So we're going to be able to do that. And then, of course, in my uh, city that I lost in the district in Santa Clara, we're going to have an all inclusive playground. So these are all things that we are, we are all able to be doing in such a short amount of time. And these were. And this, I think this was only very possible because I constantly remember when I went to Sacramento, right, and I was half the average age of the elected, but the average of legislator. And most people said that this guy would not last more than a year because I was super young, the first Gen Z, all et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I always remember a story from when I was on the actual do It was a very, very hot day in the summer of 2019. And this guy was really, he actually, you know, of course he supported me and he was really into it. And he talked for a very long time. I just remember because it was so, so hot, it was 100 degrees or something, and I was really sweating. 
And he said that the most important thing he wanted a legislator or a representative is that for someone, for us, our community to be a respectful pain in the ass to everyone else. And that's what I want. That's what I embody. Uh, sometimes we'll see that I piss off a lot of special interests, big oil, a lot of big corporations and stuff like that, but we have to do it for our community. That's why I'm actually one of two legislators in the entire state legislature that does not take any corporate money whatsoever, just like our congressman. <laughs> One of the few that does not take any corporate or PAC money or lobbyist money altogether, because I believe this is what our community values are: is that we fight for the people. We fight for each and every day people who struggle, not those who can afford big time lobbyists. I'll also talk to them. I'll also talk to big time lobbyists and talk to them all, but they don't get special treatment. That's the important part. Because for too long, our politics has been inside the scale, a good good old boys club, and I say we must end that. And this is starting. Especially with a lot of the local left dancing in our district and just surrounding districts, our new state senator, we are paving a new way. As you see in DC right now, it's fundamentally broken. Even when they have power, they fall amongst themselves and they fight over those arcane things. We have to be thinking about how do we deliver for everyday families. And that's what I'm proud of doing in California. You know, we have such important issues in front of us. We have housing affordability, homelessness. Uh, public safety and climate change. And already in my first term, I'm already chair of two committees. I'm the chair of the Environmental Safety and Toxic Materials Committee, uh, not feeling that, but it is very important, and especially dealing with like, our climate change and especially the legacy pollutants. I'm also chair of our Social Housing Select Committee, which if you get a tote bag, you'll see that I'm very passionate about. But we need to have more and more solutions to our housing crisis, but also be humble enough to look at the countries where many of our families come from, look at Asia, look at Europe, and see how our developed peers are doing. It. Because in California, unfortunately, sometimes we like to rest on the world. We say, we're the fourth largest economy in the world. We're so great, we're so great. Tic Tac Texas, you know, we say that all the time. But the fact of the matter is, there are small countries in Asia and Europe and even other states that do better than us. And we have to continue to maintain our mental progress, or else we will lose people. I'm not as concerned about the mega rich. What, 0.0001% of people, billionaires, that keep flying around to New York and California. I'm concerned about the hardworking families that say, rent is too high, I can't afford my mortgage, I can't afford my property tax, and they move to Idaho, where they are not good time. So I don't want that to be the case. <laughs> but so that's why I worked really hard in my first term. In our first term, you know, I was able to get 18 bills passed, 15 of them signed into law. And that is pretty much on the high average side. And I also did hundreds of one-on-one -on -one office hour sessions and dozens of town halls and heritage events, even during the pandemic, because that was important. Something I always remember and I thought about when I was running is if I got into the office, I want to do things differently. I want to be accessible to everyone and make sure that everyone's heard. And that's why we do these office hour sessions. And actually, sometimes um, we have amazing bill ideas about that. And today, later on, we're going to do a bill uh, activity, because that's what the town hall has worked for. Uh, I want to just give a shout out to a Fremont resident who I just literally went up to the door one day and he said, hey, can you do this bill for me? And uh, it, it was a bill done by so-and-so you know, in -so, 2016. I was like, okay. You know, and it sounded great. And at that time, this bill is now signed. And as of today, if you are a disabled veteran or disabled veteran, uh, you don't have any bridge tools anymore. And that was someone who literally had to go from Fremont to Palo Alto to do a VA treatments all the time. So we crossed the bridge to do it all the time. So those are the small things. And I'm really proud to be able to do a lot of organic resource things, so small but very, very important steps for these very large systematic changes of getting corporate money out of politics or changing fundamentally how we deliver housing in California. We must be able to do all these things. Uh, also, my staff did a very wonderful job of things. I'm sorry, we needed from all that. But, uh, and during my first term in office, we also helped close over 2,000, 2,000 PDD cases. That was 2,000 people who did not expect 2020 to lose their job like that. 2,000 people that we helped. Um, and that is no small thing thanks to my district office. So we can give a round of applause for that. And so that's the kind of leadership I want to keep embodying. That's the kind of um, service I want to do. I always tell local elected young people and even my colleagues sometimes is the only guarantee I have is these two years. We like to, as electives, to say that obviously we have long term loans and we last forever as long as we want. But the only guarantee is these two years. So why not make our two year terms matter? I have no regrets in the two years that we took big risks, big gambles, and jumped big things. But I think we've moved the needle. One thing I am um, most proud about and 
honestly very surreal is that a lot of the bills that my capital team and I and our entire office working on is now on the question endorsement questionnaire the candidates come up this bill. Now, where do you stand on this bill? On this bill, this bill. Those are things that I would have thought. It's very surreal. But I think as we continue to create a new generation of leadership, a new generation of politics, we'll be able to do that thing. And that's why I also wanted to have that long list of local elements because I truly believe in breaking down those walls. No longer should we work in those silos where it's just federal government, just state government, just the city. We can do so much when we work together for our schools, for our city, and we should leverage our strengths in different uh, complementary strengths in that sense. So I truly believe in this collaborative approach that all levels of government engagement, while we may not always share the same partisan label and not all and ideological adherence, we're all committed to the most good for the most people. And I want to thank you for doing that, and I thank you for giving me a second term. Thank you. So now I am going to talk a little bit about our Bill Ideas Town Hall aspect of it. Um, and you'll hear me talk for this uh, Is that we are going to have um, post boards around the room. And I'd like to hear from you about what you think about these ideas. For those here in person, my staff is working right now to provide you with stickers. So you will be able to indicate your support for this bill. So if you like a bill idea, you can see your stickers on it. Uh, in the moment, in a moment, you will be able to go to the center aisle and place one of your stickers on poster boards for the four ideas that you think will have the biggest impact on you. And if you're not quite ready to vote yet, uh, and for those online, we have a web form that I'm sure is up right now, as well as you can fill out. You can find a link for, to provide feedback on the pinned comment to this video. Uh, my staff can also help you find the link and answer any questions you have if you're in person. And if you have an idea for a bill that is completely different and you want to share with me, there is also a form on the signing table uh, for you to fill out as well in the comments. And as we get this ready, I'd like to also invite the Eternity Band to come back. The Eternity Band to come back. Uh, wait, sorry. I, this, this, is, uh, this is what I do this script before I actually read out for you. But I just want to say quickly that the bill ideas really, really quickly before you get to vote on them. So just really quickly, we I don't so because they're facing me, I don't know where they are. Our first bill idea is to save our night skies. This is a bill to not only save electricity and money, but also save the natural dark skies and the migratory patterns of animals. This was a bill that I ran last year, but was unfortunately vetoed by the governor. So we're doing it again. I also have a bill, I don't know, I think point which direction to do that. Um, we also have a bill to get foreign money out of politics. To get foreign money out of politics, this is a bill that would close a loophole in Citizens United to ensure that foreign owned companies, uh, foreign companies with strong foreign ownership, cannot participate in our democracy. And an example of this is right now, you might not know this company before, but called Twitter. Twitter is significantly owned by uh, Arabian princes and oil funds, and they actually right now have a substantial ability to to influence uh, our political process. We also have our California tax on extreme wealth, and this is modeled after the uh, Elizabeth Warren proposal, and it's something we're working with other partner states to uh, target the assets of the ultra billionaire class. A one, a one cent on every dollar is a billion dollar fortune, and that would generate billions of dollars for our school, roads, and our, um, our communities. We also have my signature bill, the Social Housing Act of 2023, which is modeled after Singapore and Vienna, which will be able to deliver um, affordable, inexpensive homes for all incomes. We also have our mobile mental health response. This one collects more data on mobile mental health responses, focusing on marginalized communities. We also have a bill about daylight parking requirements. This bill would prohibit parking within a certain distance of crosswalks to enhance visibility for pedestrians and drivers. We also have a bill about HOA reforms. This would reduce the power of HOAs by limiting assessment increases. So this one is for union homeowners and HOAs. Uh, we also have our bill about publicly financing elections. Uh, there are a lot of cities in California and across this nation right now that publicly finance elections and that gives power back to the people to do this. Um, we also have a bill about more transparency food delivery platforms. Uh, and then we also have a bill about ITIN holders and financial loan applications. It requires all financial loan applications to accept those with an individual taxpayer identification number, that's ITIN, rather than just social security number. And the last bill that is out there is to ban the 
we practice a deep final pass, which New York and Maryland have already done. And we can catch it to them. So there are a bunch of good ideas out there, uh, all spread out through the room. Please put stickers which one you want. Um, but if you are interested in creating your own build idea, then you can come up. Oh, and these are folks that I missed on the long list. So I apologize for that. I forgot to mention Han Man, our new Milpitas City Council member. And of course, Cheryl Gordon, our Milpitas Superintendent. Thank you for being here. Oh, no, not yet. Oh, okay. And if folks want to make sure they can come up to the stage, we have a beautiful background, which is interesting. So thank you so much, and we're good to go. Thank you so much.